Now broadcasting from his hidden bunker and fully stocked bar, it is the Saturday Report with Hope Sebastian Taylor. Thank you and welcome once again, my friends, to the Saturday Report with me, Coach Sebastian Taylor, adventurer, entrepreneur, and amateur home interior decorator. And welcome to AWSM Radio, an independent digital-only radio station that plays today's best music, old-school classics, along with a rotating cast of all-star DJs. AWSM Radio focuses on mainstream artists, independent artists, along with a variety of interesting talk and music shows throughout the day. All we do is entertain, inspire, and inform. And my friends, I want to engage with you. I want you to be part of the conversation. So find me on the Twitter, on the Rizzle, uh, on the Instagram, on Cameo, and of course at anchor.fm, all at Colt S. Taylor. So any of those sites slash Colt S. Taylor. And of course, you can subscribe to the podcast version of the show at anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor, just in case you may have missed a previous show because you had a busy weekend. It happens to us all. And finally, finally, follow me at ColtSebastianTaylor.com. All right, folks, let's get started with this week's Saturday Report. First up this week, my friends, not stupendous news to share with you, but news that is important nonetheless. Uh, as you may remember, if you, if you know, if you were around at the time, uh, we just got through COVID-19, a massive worldwide, worldwide pandemic. Uh, there were murder hornets last year, which didn't really affect us. They're more of a bee population issue. But uh, don't call the comeback. Monkeypox is popping up in unusual places in the United States and in Europe. Uh, now, just to back up a little bit, uh, usually I don't cover, you know, worldwide health things like this, uh, but this one has me a smidge worried, just a smidge worried. Um, I feel like it has the sort of characteristics of how I felt in January and February of 2020 of uh, watching uh, news reports out of China and then Italy and then going to myself, oh boy. That's, that's not good. Hmm. This could get out of hand rather quickly. And, uh, I don't, I don't see the same thing yet with monkeypox. But boy, howdy. It's got those vibes. It's got those vibes. So, let me give you a brief education of what's going on here. Monkeypox. Um, it is a, a viral disease, uh, related to smallpox, also chickenpox. There's, there's... the Pox is a very popular term to put on uh, various diseases that do the same thing. So uh, basically, basically, monkeypox is kind of a less severe version of smallpox, but a more severe version of chickenpox. So that uh, gives you gives you gives you the idea there of a where that order of of pox severity is in the whole pox ecosystem. Uh, now, monkeypox is called monkeypox uh, because it was named at a time where they didn't have as uh, neutral naming conventions they did now. Uh, like COVID-19 was named as sort of a neutral term, so it doesn't give you any sort of negative connotations. As opposed to like swine flu or bird flu or chickenpox. Chickenpox is not actually caused by chickens. Um, and monkeypox is not actually caused by monkeys. Um, but... Uh, when it was first discovered and identified, uh, the connection they had was uh, the the it, it, it does it does occur in the monkey population, but it's not the place where they think it, it originates from. It's not the natural reservoir of the virus. Uh, they're not sure where it comes from, but they're, they're pretty sure it is not. Uh, it's not coming from exactly monkeys. Uh, it was first detected in 1958. In captive monkeys, and the first uh, recorded case was in 1970. Now, it is a rare viral disease. In fact, it had not been seen in Central Africa uh, for almost a few. For it was very rare. In fact, Nigeria uh, had not seen one in four decades, and then it came roaring back last year, 
and it was at first thought to be a mainly tropical disease. Uh, it stays around the equator, you know, places like Africa and uh, South America, those places. But in recent weeks, there have been more cases in Europe, the United States, uh, England has 20 cases right now, and New York has a case, Massachusetts has a case, and they're worried that this could be just the start of a a reasonably a decent outbreak of monkeypox. Now, the good news is that, much like chickenpox, after about 14 to 21 days, it's done. You're like, you, 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 you get exhausted, you swell, you get little scabs on your skin and whatnot, like chickenpox, for those who did not have the chickenpox vaccine that's available today. Um, it can be, uh, you know, you, you, go, you go through it for about two weeks, and it is not... Not fantastic. Like I said, you uh, uh, develop a fever, a rash. Uh, the rash spreads to the face, hands, palms, and feet. Uh, severe itching. So it's um, it's uh, it's 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 kind of a mess. But like I said, wraps itself up in fourteen twenty one days. However, like I said, it is less severe than smallpox, which is a very deadly disease that was. Uh, eradicated uh, uh, last century through a successful vaccination program. In fact, the only virus that we have successfully eradicated as a as a human race has been smallpox. Uh, we haven't really been able to get rid of anything else, but we got rid of smallpox. Um, but it's more severe than, than chickenpox. Uh, it can have a fatality rate between 0 and 10%, which is... Pretty bad. Ten percent's a ten percent is a lot. Uh, that's you know that's way higher than COVID nineteen and much 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 higher than the flu. However, that high fatality rate is associated for areas that don't have the best medical care or the best nutrition, uh, so to speak. So third world countries do seem to have a rougher go at it. Uh, does it does it impact children more than it does adults as well? However good news is that we do have a vaccine for monkeypox. The smallpox vaccine has proven to be about 85% effective against monkeypox. We have not vaccinated for smallpox in like four decades because once we got rid of the smallpox virus, you know, it was not deemed necessary to have the smallpox vaccine anymore. But there are supplies of smallpox vaccines uh, out there just in case. Uh, just just in case, but um, because the smallpox virus is still out there in labs, people like to study it, just in case it gets out, they do have smallpox vaccines available. So and this is something that I think is definitely worth monitoring. This is, um, this, is, uh, this is strange that it is appearing in Europe and the United States. Scientists are trying to isolate the virus and sort out whether this is just monk regular monkeypox or more virulent, contagious version of monkeypox. So it's uh, it's they're 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 watching this one pretty closely. Now the good news is, like you know, monkeypox is much like you know any other viral disease. Uh, you get it if you're in close contacts with contact contact with somebody. Um, you know, sneeze, cough, you touch their little scabby scabs, that sort of stuff. Uh, but this is something to watch the next few weeks, see if uh, cases start popping up more and more. Uh, will this be a repeat of COVID-19? Hopefully not. Hopefully we've got the handle on global pandemic. I know it, it, it was so nice. We probably should not do it twice. But uh, that is out there, my friends. That is out there. So uh, I'll be watching this pretty carefully. Uh, if, uh, you should too as well, like, you don't need to rearrange your entire life or anything like that. Like, I'm still going to Ireland next month. Uh, you know, I'm not worried about that. But, you know, you don't want to be the last person to find out there's no toilet paper. So, keep a, keep tabs on it. If you see things popping up closer and closer to you, you know, perhaps, maybe, just keep that in mind. Moving along to uh, lighter and happier news in the world of entertainment, uh, legendary actor James Hong received a Hollywood Walk of Fame 
uh, star this week. Um, James Hong may not be a name that you immediately think of, but he has been over in over 450 film and television credits, with some estimates saying he's been up to seven in 700 different things over his over 70 year career. That's right, 70 years. He is 93 years old, still going strong, still doing movies. An amazing actor. Uh, he might be the only person alive today who said he worked with uh, with Groucho Marx and Clark Gable. He has been around for that long. Pretty pretty amazing stuff. Now, uh, he actually also he also was almost Sulu on Star Trek. He auditioned for it uh, along with George Takei, and uh, for George Takei got the role, obviously. But uh, he uh, has gone on and been very, very successful since then. Um, his most recent movies that you probably would have heard his voice is in the Kung Fu Panda uh, series. He plays uh, the Kung Fu Panda's dad, Pan, I think. I think, I don't know. But anyways, uh, he, is, he has been in lots of movies, other movies that he's been in. Uh, one of my favorites, Big Trouble in Little China. That is one of my all-time favorites that he has been in. He is also has been in Balls of Fury, uh, Mulan. He was in Blade Runner. Uh, he was also in Chinatown, uh, The Two Lakes. Uh, I'm sorry, The Two Jakes. He, like I said, he has been in a ridiculous amount of movies. Uh, I, he was, I believe he was in the first Gremlins movie, I believe. I don't know. He's in, he's in a lot. He is in a lot. And he's currently in the Everything, Everywhere at Once trailer. Uh, but he is finally getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And uh, it was a fundraising. And then after, you, have to, you have to pay for them, obviously. It's kind of a marketing thing on there. But uh, it was pushed for uh, another amazing um, Asian-American actor. Uh, by the name of, oh gosh, I have it written down here somewhere. Ah, Daniel Day Kim, who you best know from Hawaii Five-0, as well as uh, Jin Su Kwan on Lost. So that was his sort of his big, that was sort of his big, uh, big roles in there. But he uh, pushed for it, initiated, had a fundraiser, saying it's about time that James Hong had a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, like I said, James Hong originally played a lot of stereotypical Asian roles to get into film, but kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and uh, was really one of the first, uh, first big Asian American actors who was in a variety of things. Uh, he started a the East West Players, which helped encourage uh, Asian American uh, people to get into theater and acting, and he is a really amazing person. Uh, I would say check out one of his movies, but there are so many to pick from. Um, I would say Kung Fu Panda, great movie. Big Trouble in Little China, big movie. He's he, he can still do all the lines from that movie. It's one of his favorite roles. That's a great movie. So check those out. See who it is. Oh, he also had a uh, role in Wayne's World as Wayne's uh, girlfriend's father. I think it was Wayne's World Two. Wayne's World Two, yeah, Wayne's World Two or Wayne's World One. Don't matter. He might have been in both. He's in Wayne's world. But anyways, James Hong, Hollywood star of fame, 93 years old, still doing movies. He says he's never going to retire because he loves doing movies so much. Well-deserved, great actor. You should check out one of his movies. Moving along in other entertainment news, uh, Todd Chrisley from the USA Network reality show Chrisley Knows Best and his wife Julie Chrisley have been officially been put on trial for bank fraud and tax evasion with proceedings beginning, uh, I believe, this week or next week in Atlanta. Uh, I have never seen Chrisley Knows Best. I have seen plenty of commercials, and I do not like him or his family whatsoever. I don't understand why this is still a thing on USA. I mean, we know that, you know, there was the Osbournes, the Hogan, Hulk Hogan had a show, and apparently these two other I don't even know why they're famous. Other than they had a show on USA. I just don't, do not get it. 
So anyways, uh, they began their show in 2014, but they've been legal issues for quite a while. Uh, they have just are known for living a very opulent lifestyle, apparently. Uh, but apparently they got those, they got their hands on $30 million of loans, which uh, they burned on luxury items, quote-unquote, uh, but got these loans through falsified documents and fictitious views of how much they're actually worth. So apparently uh, they just lied to get bank loans to pay off their old loans, and they kept getting new loans to pay off their other loans. Uh, apparently Julie Christie is also accused of wire fraud, and obstruction of justice as uh, she avoided paying rent on a property in California. Um, she has apparently manipulated multiple documents, forgeries, basically, uh, to law enforcement. And uh, they're also charged with conspiracy to defraud the American government for willfully filing false tax returns. Uh, they uh, Both Chrisleys have refu refuted the claims... And they have uh, blamed their former employees, saying that they're the ones who did all of the fraudulent activity and cooked all the books, and were the ones um, doing, were the ones uh, who were, uh, you know, causing the fraud. Apparently, I guess. Um, apparently, their former employee by the name of Matt Braddock uh, turned them into the FBI after they terminated his employment in 2012. And then the FBI started investigating them in 2017, and they were first indicted in 2019. Now you might think, oh boy, indicted by the federal government, this probably will impact their uh, reality show. Uh, apparently not. USA is has renewed season 10 for Chris Lee Knows Best, and uh, has another season of the spinoff show, Growing Up Chris Lee. Chris Lee, Chris Lee. I... <sighs> And also, apparently, Todd Chrisley is going to be hosting Love Limo, Limo, Love Limo, oh, God, Love Limo, a new reality dating show. Oh, boy, I just do not, like, I, I, I hope they go to jail. I just, I just, I have had enough of these reality shows. I Maybe I'm old, I'm officially old, just have had enough, so, you know, they had their nice run. It's time for them to go away. Please, please go away. Go away. Now, as much as I would love them to go away, what should never go away is my pal DC. Yes, that's right. That's the segue, my friends. My pal DC is a DJ extraordinaire, uh, and he has some shows here that you need to check out on AWSM Radio. First up on Friday nights at 9 p.m., it's DC Live in Effect. You do not want to miss out while he smashes it on the ones and twos, kicking the beats from South Florida every week. Then on Saturdays, yes, later tonight, it's the DC House Party bringing you the freestyling DJing to the is his freestyling DJing to the max. Saturdays at 10 p.m. The House Party Saturdays will give you the Miami vibe without actually having to go down to Miami from the top clubs to the bars. DC. We'll bring the party to you. And then finally, wrap up your Sundays at 10 p.m. with DC Live in effect once again. Your entire weekend, it's already it's already planned. So, Fridays at 9 p.m., DC Live in effect. Saturdays at 10 p.m., DC House Party Saturdays. And then finally, Sunday at 10 p.m., DC Live in effect once again. Only here, my friends... On AWSM Radio. Next up, folks, do you remember the pharma bro, Martin Shkreli? Shkreli? That guy went to jail for uh, defrauding, for f fun defrauding, for fraud. He was the guy dubbed the pharma bro uh, for uh, buying uh, uh, Dara Prim and then jacking the price up 4,000% overnight in 2015 to life saving drug whose patent had fallen out, I guess, of uh, not renewed. And so he snatched up the patent and then increased the price of it by 4,000% to get as much money as possible out of insurance companies. And smugly, smugly defended it. Big grin and what now. Like, oh, well, I'm a, I'm a pharma bro. Uh, he apparently bought, uh, lived a very extravagant lifestyle, got banned from Twitter for being a troll, 
Uh, he bought the only album copy of a Wu Tang Clan uh, album that, uh, legally speaking, the Wu Tang Clan is allowed to steal it back or Bill Murray. Uh, either two of those parties can steal that back if from him if they have a chance. It's was part of the contract. I don't know. I think it's great, though, that Bill Murray is somehow involved with that. But uh, he was released from prison. He was released from prison. Uh, he's going to go to a halfway house. He was uh, sentenced to seven years in prison for um, fraud, basically. He's also banned, banned from uh, ever working in the pharmaceutical industry again. He's supposed to pay $25 million dollars. For engaging in anti-competitive contact, uh, conduct to pr- to protect Vera's profits earned from Daraprim, and uh, they also agreed to pay the company. The company also agreed to pay forty million dollars to plaintiff in the same case, uh, in to seven states, including New York and California, for jacking up that price. So, um, yeah, he's a really, really big d bag. That uh, I think should still be in jail, but he did get out for good behavior. He'll be in a halfway house for a bit and then serving the rest of his sentence, uh, I guess, outside of jail, doing doing his thing. Uh, he said getting out of jail is easier than Twitter jail. Uh, I hope he doesn't go back to Twitter because, like I said, ginormous D-bag. Although it was funny. Apparently he was on Twitch when the FBI called him and said, hey, we're going to arrest you tomorrow. And he hung up on them. And then they came and they arrested him. So, uh, yeah. But he isn't the only guy who got released from prison early this week. Billy McFarlane also was released from prison early this week. Who's that? Well, do you remember the Fire Festival? Remember that in 2018 where all those people went to an island in the Bahamas for this big festival that turned out to be a big scam? And they got stuck there on the island for two days until the uh, Bahama Bahama government kind of kicked them all out. Uh, yeah, yeah, the fire festival. It's uh, quite the uh, quite the thing. Uh, it was promoted by uh, Kardashians, all these different models, where you got this fire bracelet, and there'll be these luxurious sort of huts, and it's all expense paid in like a five day concert on the island once owned by Pablo Escobar which wasn't that island at all. And so when they got there, there were peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and tents, of like FEMA tents, and everyone got their stuff stolen. It was, I remember, I remember watching this go down live on Twitter and it being, oh boy, that's crazy. I think Ja Rule was somehow involved with this. Like, he was going to be the main event. And like, None of the bands went. Like, the bands, like, pulled out the day before once they realized how much of a, a, much of a shit show this was going to be. Pulled out. They pulled out, and all these thousands of folks just got there and were stuck there with no food, no flashlights, no security, just left on an island. Uh, originally, McFarlane uh, blamed a, a storm that came through and wrecked everything. But there was no storm. Uh, he defrauded a bunch of people. And he went to jail. He went to jail. He was sentenced to six years in jail in 2018. Uh, but has now since moved to a halfway house. Uh, where he will have community confinement until his full release and whatnot. So I believe he... Uh, yeah, he, he... You know what? There is a great documentary called The Internet Historian that has like... How everything went down with this, and uh, I mean, it was made like four or five years, like two thousand nineteen. So he doesn't have any updates with him, but uh, yeah, he went to jail too. But both him and Farmer Bro, maybe they'll team up and have Farmer Bro Fire Festival to the big fraud, um, sometime soon, sometime soon. So uh, I thought it was funny that both Farmer Bro and the Fire Festival Bro both. Both got got out of jail. Oh, pre-COVID-19, those were some pretty amazing times for D-bags around the world. Moving along in other celebrity news, Rihanna and ASAP Rocky welcomed their first child this week. Rihanna, who has been gracing the red carpet, showing off her baby bump 
uh, proudly, uh, not, not getting any maternity clothes. She's just showing, like, this is my baby bump. But uh, she had her first child with a 34. Uh, the, she, is, uh, she is 34? Yeah, she is 34. Um, and uh, she, uh, she had their first, they had their first child together. Uh, this is ahead of the Vogue cover of uh, her. Uh, she discussed uh, how uh, Rocky well, got out of her friend zone. Uh, apparently, they were just friends, and he managed to get out of her friend zone, according to her, which was published on April 12th. People don't get out of the friend zone very easily with me, and I still like, took a while to get over how much I know him and how much he knows me, because we also know how much trouble we can land each other in. Uh, apparently, uh, they became closer and became a family during the 2020 quarantine. Uh, the two musicians left their luxuries behind to go on a road trip from L.A. to New York. Um, according to, uh, uh, Rihanna, I cooked our food on this little janky grill I bought from Walmart. I love the simple things, but also grand adventures. I just feel like I can do any part of, I, I just feel like I can do any part of my life by his side. So that's actually, that's actually pretty, pretty sweet. Um, so, uh, Rihanna, apparently, is, uh, described as the richest female musician, and became a billionaire in 2021, and apparently is worth $1.7 billion. That is pretty, uh, that is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing for her. So, uh, obviously, they, they became closer after she became pregnant, and they are sticking together. So, uh. That's pretty great. I'm very, 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 very happy for her. Uh, according to um, according to the turn of the rumors, both uh, Rihanna and Rocky have largely kept mum about their relationship, but there were rumors about them going all the way back as 2013, when he opened up on her Rihanna's World Diamonds Rihanna's Diamonds World Tour. I missed that one, uh, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. The rapper uh, referred to her as the one, and uh, uh, it seems like he is very much in love with her. So that's pretty sweet. Very, very, very sweet. Very, very sweet. Uh, as you may remember, and I did cover this, Rihanna was named as Barbados, Barbados, the country of Barbados, eleventh national hero by Prime Minister Mia Motley as a country celebrated becoming a republic. For the first time in its history, it used to have Queen Elizabeth as its monarch and then decided to no longer have a monarchy and become a republic. And when that happened, Rihanna was named the 11th national hero. She is of Barbadian, Barbados descent. Barbados descent. So, uh, well, so uh, congratulations, Rihanna. I'm very happy for her. She certainly deserves a lot of happiness. She is a pretty, pretty, pretty good singer. And uh, when she has been on Saturday Night Live... Very very funny, very funny. So uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a fan of her work. I don't I have any Rihanna albums, but uh, she is a very talented person, and I hope she's happy. I hope she's happy. Speaking of amazingly successful and a delightful person, my pal Rox is one of them. I consider her the Rihanna of AWSM Radio, and she has her own drive time show here uh, called the Rock Sessions, making sure your evening commute home is fun. Featuring the hottest music on the charts and some other surprises in between, she will make it rock, rock style, Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., right here on AWSM Radio. Listen to the rock sessions, my friends. Your drive home will be oh so much better by listening to my pal, Rocks. Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., right here on AWSM Radio. Radio. Moving along, folks. As I mentioned earlier, we had to deal with murder hornets last year, and now this year, the the hits they just keep coming. Invasive jumping worms. <laughs> yes, jumping worms have made their way to California, and scientists are worried. Uh, they apparently thrash violently, like rattlesnakes, and can jump. Up to a foot into the air. Yes, worms. These worms can jump up into a foot into the air. They are jumping worms, also known as crazy snake worms, Asian jumping worms, 
Jersey Wigglers, and Alabama Jumpers. They are an invasive worm species native to Japan in the Korean Peninsula, but have made their way over here over the last decade through imported plants from those regions. Uh, were originally found on the East Coast, but have been working their way west. They've been found in California last July and identified in Napa County by the California Department of Food and Agricultural uh, Department. And they were identified through DNA sequencing. Now, surprise yourself, why is that such a big deal? What does it matter? Well, they are very active, very aggressive, and have voracious appetites. That's right, they eat just about everything. Uh, leaves, debris, uh, homes of smaller animals, leaving behind a nutrient-free dried worm casing that apparently looks like taco meat. Uh, they can even eat through nests of birds that sit on the forest floor, and they uh, leave behind, uh, well, they kill a lot of stuff. They, they eat roots and everything else, and they can cause erosion by cause the... Ground that they eat through is now devoid of life. I mean, this is not like a desert or anything like that, but it does impact the biodiversity of uh, the area. According to the U.S. Forest Service blog, uh, they said jumping worms can eat it all. They are never satisfied. Uh, the, they say that they pose a huge threat to forest life and can hurt the biodiversity in nurseries, parks, and residential gardens. Uh, the report warns that jumping worms will likely be able to establish a widespread distribution through California's forest habitat, ornamental production sites, particularly in residential and commercial environments. Uh, Asian jumping worms change the nature of the soil, according to Matt Callahan, the Forest Service researcher who specializes in soils. In fact, earthworms can have such a huge impact that they're able to actually re-engineer the ecosystems around them. Yes, that's right. That's right. Earthworms are very, very important. They do a lot. Uh, so if you see them on, um, if you see them on uh, YouTube, they really do thrash around quite a bit. Um, they are hard, birds have a hard time grabbing them to eat them. They're, they're quite a bit. Uh, there's also a uh, concern that they are going to edge out native earthworms and threaten other species. Uh, be, according to reports, beyond, quote, beyond eating everything in their path like other worms, the jumping worm is a hermaphrodite, able to reproduce without mating by laying eggs that look like soil. And once established, jumping worms are impossible to eradicate. So, yeah. Yeah, that's not great. That is not great at all. So, jumping worms... They're here, they're around, and they're an invasive species, and they are hard to get rid of. So, if you see a worm thrashing about in your backyard, um, you should probably get rid of them. You should probably get rid of them. Uh, according to Golden State, uh, according to Cornell University's Master Gardener, Sandy Vano, uh, has some blunt advice if you find them. Bag them up. And throw them in the trash or place them in a bag and leave them out in the sun. In short, destroy them. So, hooray! Jumping worms! Everything's going great. Jumping worms, murder hornets, monkeypox. 2022 is 2020 great. <sighs> Moving along in some entertainment news, uh, some unfortunate sad news. Mary Sch uh, Schoenberg, known for her soap opera role, as the world turns and one life to live, uh, died this week due to complications from breast cancer. She was only 37 years old. Uh, her husband, Zach uh, Rob Didis, known for his roles on Story for Your Loss and Secession, confirmed her passing in a Facebook post where he uh, thanked her fans for support during her diagnosis. According to the post, uh, please don't say Maureen uh, lost her battle to cancer. It's simply not true. I watch her kick cancer's ass every day since diagnosis. She is incredible. We chose, we, choo we chose to attack her diagnosis with blind optimism. We only talked about the future and continue moving forward. I don't know if this was right, but it was all we knew how to do. 
Uh, she was a graduate of DeSales University, uh, performed in the Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival, and uh, also in the Dramatist Guild of America in New York City. Her first television credit was that of Allison Stewart, and her character on As the World Turns. She was a second actor to portray her character after Jessica Dunphy left the show in 2005. She made her last appearance in 2007 during a crossover between uh, As the World Turns and The Young and the Restless. Uh, she then joined the main cast of As the World Turns and appeared in over 300 episodes until it was canceled in 2010. Uh, she then was on a short-lived revival of One Life to Win, One Life, One Life to Live on ABC, where she played the character of Joe Sullivan. And then from 2014 to 2017, she starred in the meta soap opera uh, Tainted Dreams, which followed the backstage drama of a soap opera cast. Uh, besides that, she had some guest appearances, guest appearances on Fringe, Army Wives, Blue Bloods, Manhattan Love Story, Elementary, The Good Fight, and Divorce. In addition, uh, she had a recurring role on the third upcoming season of the Showtime, show, Showtime drama City of the Hill with Kevin Bacon and uh, Aldous Hodge. So uh, she was 37 years old, had a very, very good career. Uh, I don't watch soap operas, but I do know plenty of folks who do. And who re fondly remember her, but unfortunately she has passed away this week at the, un at the very... Unbelievably young age of 37 due to breast cancer. So, uh, condolences to her, to her family. Moving back to crime and law. Murder conviction for a Las Vegas real estate mogul's wife who was convicted of murdering him. was Her, her conviction was vacated this week after spending 20 years in prison. The judge vacated the murder conviction of 78-year-old uh, a 78 year old Las Vegas woman named Margaret Rudin, uh, a uh, socialite antique shop owner, uh, from the 1994 killing of her millionaire husband, um, uh, mil millionaire husband Ron Rudin. Uh, she was convicted in 2020, uh, she was convicted in 2001. Uh, she was paroled in 2020, uh, so she spent 20 years in jail, but that conviction was vacated. Uh, the judge, uh, District Judge Richard Bulwer, 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 ruled Sunday that she received ineffective legal representation from her late defense attorney, uh, Michael Amador, according to that. Uh, the entire time she has maintained her innocence. Uh, I will be 79 years old at the end of this month, so I'm very, very grateful, she said in a newspaper. Friends, if you have a hankering for basketball, then you need to be here Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. because To The Rack with Mac is your show. It is your go-to spot for all things basketball. Join NBA expert Mac Daddy as he brings you a full hour of high-flying hoops expertise for all things NBA. Tune in to To The Rack with Mac Wednesday nights. 9 p.m. here on AWSM Radio. Then stick around because at 10 p.m. it's what's going on. It is our Fox Sports Show affiliate, or Fox Sports Affiliate Show, uh, providing listeners with over 150 combined years of sports knowledge, hosted by Nate Brown and his crew. They have uh, seen it all in Western New York sports over the past two decades, and now they're moving national, and we've got their show here Wednesdays at 10 p.m. So, for all of your sports needs, it's To The Rack With Mac at 9 p.m. What's going on at 10 p.m.? Wednesday nights, right here on AWSM Radio. Well, my friends, that just about wraps up today. Sorry for me, Colt Sebastian Taylor. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Remember, you can find me on the Twitter, on the Instagram, on the Rizzle, and on the Cameo at Colt S. Taylor. Subscribe to the podcast version of this show, which occasionally may have one or two extra stories added to it for some extra value at uh, anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor. Also very helpful if you're too busy some weekends to actually catch my show. You don't want to miss out. You don't want to miss out. And of course, if you haven't already bookmarked, ColtSebastianTaylor.com to see all the other things I'm up to on a month-to-month -month basis. 
All right, my friends. Until next week, I am, of course, your friend, Colt Sebastian Taylor. And I'll see you later. Have a good weekend.